Today we're going to talk about crop protection label updates. These are, it's not by any means a complete list. It's a little bit of everything and not a lot of anything. We're going to cover a lot of stuff here. I've gotten a handout. There's stuff on both sides for you. Um, it's just kind of a summary. It's by no means all inclusive. Double check labels, you know, for your specific use. Okay, give you that, you know, right up front. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, alfalfa products, Chateau and Cobalt. Uh, a couple of wheat only products, Powerflex and Gold Sky. Uh, products for wheat or barley, Axial XL, Starring Ultra, Wide Match, Husky, and we'll talk briefly about uh, Milestone and Chaparral. Start off with Chateau. Chateau is a fairly new product for the alfalfa market. It's been out for a few years, um, you know, in, in some of the vegetable crops, uh, some of the berry crops. It's now labeled for alfalfa, and it can be used on, on younger alfalfa. The, the label says that it can be applied to established alfalfa. Well, their definition of established is it's had one cutting. So if you've straight seeded alfalfa, had one cutting, you can use Chateau. Um, and we're going to talk about timing here in just a minute. It does not leach or volatilize. It's very safe, you know, environmentally that way. But it is a pre-emergent herbicide. It's not going to kill weeds that are already up and growing. So we're talking dormant applications for, you know, from all intents and purposes. Has a four ounce use rate. Uh, that's just a flat rate for alfalfa. Uh, we want to, if you want to go in between cuttings to try to pick up weeds that have not germinated, you can go immediately after you've taken a cutting of hay, but before six inches of growth occurs. It does cause, a, you know, some burning and speckling on the leaves, um, you know, when you put it on. Um, for best results, we like applying it in you know, the early to late fall you know, before those target weeds emerge. Typical application here in Cache Valley is going to be somewhere from the end of October uh, to the middle of November, uh, depending on what, you know, what the fall does. Um, again, you know, it has some similar restrictions to like Velpar and Metrovusen that we don't want a lot of residue there. This stuff has to get to the soil. So if you have a lot of residue there, um, we've got to do something with that. It needs at least a quarter of an inch of irrigation or rainfall for activation. We're pretty sure we're going to get at least a quarter of an inch over the winter. Um, if some of the fall, you know, those winter annual weeds, some of those annual weeds have germinated in the fall, stuff like shepherd's purse or cheatgrass, downy brome, um, you may have to tank mix with some paraquat, like gramoxone. Can't go on by ground rig, go on by air or chemigation. Most everything here in the valley is going to be by ground rig. We need really good coverage. Uh, we typically want to see at least 20 gallons per acre. It does not require a surfactant unless you're tank mixing it with, with something else. The reentry interval is 12 hours and the pre-harvest interval is 25 days, so that's pretty short. Here's a picture that tells you a little bit, you know, show you a little bit of what the control is. You can see that line up through the center, you know, with the downy brome here in the alfalfa and, uh, you know, the clean hay on the, on the right there. I come from uh, Dr. Parker up to Washington State. Another, another test plot there. Um, looks like a good applicator skip. And I'm not sure what weed it was. This came right off the Valent website, and they didn't identify which weed this was. But uh, a, good, a good chemical skip sells a lot of chemical. Next thing we're going to talk about is cobalt. Cobalt is an insecticide, not a herbicide. It's you know, a newer product from Dow AgriScience. It is, it is a better product. You know, since we lost Furidan, we don't have anything in our toolbox that will do what Furidan did. Just doesn't exist. We have not found anything that will give us the same control as Furidan. Cobalt's probably one of the closest things. Has two different modes of action, uh, and which helps us in our resistance management. Also, it gives you two different, two different ways that, they ki you know, that it kills the, the weevil has a very quick knockdown and a pretty good residual control. The nice thing is, is it's kind of all in one jug. You're not having to, you know, t you know try to roll your own, per se. It is a mix of chlorpyrifos, or Lorsban, and a, a newer product called Gamma Cyhalothrin. This is a pyrethroid, similar to something like Warrior, or Mustang, Pounce, you know, along those lines. Um, the Gamma Cyhalothrin is a, is a pretty active, you know, compound. And they both work differently, so it's kind of nice that way. The chlorpyrifos kind of has some fuming activity, and that fuming activity 
uh, you'll really repel, you know, repels them, and uh, you know, the, especially the, you know, the younger worms and and younger instars. But the the uh, gamma cyhalothrin, you know, uh, the adult larvae tend to really dislike it, um, and it is more effective at higher temperatures than most other pyrethroids. Uh, most of the research you'll see, you will say, you know, the pyrethroids aren't as safe. You know, you don't want to use them as much at, under, you know, at high temperatures. Um, mixes very well. We've used it uh, a little bit last year. Uh, it was kind of the first year we had a look at it. Mixes very nicely. We didn't have any, any problems with it. Uh, we did fly some on um, over on some large acreages over in Wyoming and uh, put it on with a little bit of fertilizer, and we did not have any trouble with it at all. Um, and you do use lower rates versus if you were using a straight lures van. Rates vary from 13 ounces to 38 ounces per acre. Depending on what your goals are when your timing is, you determine what rate you're going to do. If you're going to go with a pre-harvest application, say two or three weeks before first cutting, uh, you think you've got weevil out there, make sure your pre-harvest interval is seven days up to 13 ounces, 14 days from 13 to 26, and 21 days from 26 to 38 ounces. Um, we put 13 ounces on over in Wyoming seven days before they were going to cut. We did feel like we had adequate control for about 10 to 14 days. And uh, after 14 days, you know, they started coming back. Uh, I don't think 13 ounces is enough if you're going on a pre-harvest. 13 ounces might be enough on a stubble application when you don't have all that foliage there. But if you're going to go pre-harvest, I, I think you need to be up somewhere in the 19, 20 ounce range um, to, to get good control on them. But you know, be, you know, be, be mindful of that pre-harvest interval. That's, that's probably the thing you have to manage for as much as anything. The cobalt rates for alfalfa weevil, that, you know, they recommend 19 ounces. Army worms, 19 ounces. And some of the leaf hopper species, we don't have a lot of problems with that. And very occasionally do we have any problem with P. aphids, but 13 to 19 ounces, and it does a really nice job. It is also labeled on wheat uh, for Russian wheat aphids at 13 ounces. Also, it's labeled for cereal leaf beetle and, you know, at 13 ounces as well. It may not be the best product for cereal leaf beetle because of expense. There's, there's others that would probably do, this, you know, do us just as well for the money. Moving on here, the next wheat, or wheat only products, Gold Sky and PowerFlex. We'll probably spend more time on these than anything else. These are some fairly new compounds coming out of Dow that are grass herbicides as the base of them for use in wheat only. PowerFlex is for winter wheat and Gold Sky can be used on either winter wheat or spring wheat. Um, pretty much any variety, uh, Durham wheat is excluded on the, you know, it's not labeled for Durham wheat. But they're, right now, they haven't found any of the winter or spring varieties that there's any problems with. It's a very active pro, you know, compound, the PowerFlex. It does get more than just grassy weeds. Uh, it does get quite a few of the broadleaf weeds. But it, it, it also has to, the, well, the active ingredient is pyroxylam. It also has a safener because pyroxylam on its own is pretty hard on wheat. So they found a safener to safen that up to be able to, you know, to use it in winter wheat. And it does, it does a really nice job. It is, it's an ALS, you know, group two products, you know, and, uh, you know, we have a lot of those around, uh, but it's not, they're not real common for us to use in the grass, you know, in this grass market here. But grass on broadleaves, it is a wettable granule, um, you know, and you use three and a half ounces per acre. I think it comes in like a seven and a half pound container is what it is. Now on winter wheat, you go on post-emergent. It can go be, be sprayed on either in the fall or the spring. I've got pictures here that show you the difference. They'll show you what control means on the, in the spring. Fall, you'll get, if you can put it on in the fall, you'll get a lot better control of your grasses. Control in the fall means dried up, brown, crispy, dead grass plants. Uh, control in the spring means a whole different thing. It's, it means a shorter, stunted plant, uh, less seed production. It's not going to consume near as much water or nutrients, and it doesn't get up above the canopy. And we're going to show you, you know, some, some pictures of that. But timing on the crop, you can go anytime from the three leaf up to jointing. You know, so you want to be on it you know, fairly early. And your grass weeds two leaves up to two tillers. If you're getting beyond that, um, 
you know, you can probably set it back some, but you're not going get to get the control. Broadleaf weeds, we want them two inches or less. It does need some surfactants with it. We want either non-ionic surfactant plus ammonium sulfate or crop oil. Only use a crop oil if you're going to put down PowerFlex alone. If you're going to put any type of a broadleaf herbicide with it, do not use the crop oil. You can put it on with some liquid nitrogen. So if you wanted to, you know, top dress some nitrogen, you know, nitrogen on your winter wheat at the same time, you can go up to 50% of the spray volume and uh, up to 30 pounds of nitrogen um, with it. And you know, we've done that quite successfully and haven't had a lot of trouble. A uh, minimum of 10 gallons, um, you know, we like, you know, on, on it by ground. Uh, five gallons by air. We don't ha do a lot of air down here. Reentry interval is only 12 hours. Your pre-harvest interval is 60 days. That's usually not a problem. You're applying this in, you know, April, and you're not going to harvest till you know August. So um, the 60 days usually isn't a problem. The, the the nice thing that the biggest advantage PowerFlex has over any of the previous grass herbicides we've been able to use in wheat is this rotation interval. Um, if you've ever used uh, Maverick or Osprey, um, Olympus, those products have extremely long residuals. You know, you're locked into wheat for two to three years. Wheat, you can, go, you know, you can replant in one month, barley, um, oats in nine months, alfalfa in nine months, you know, mustard, safflower, also there in nine months. Other crops not listed in 12 months. So, you know, about worst case scenario, you know, the next year, you, the next spring, you could go to about anything you wanted. If you look at the grassy weeds, the most common ones that we'll fight here are downy brome, Japanese brome, some cheat. Um, usually, foxtail isn't as big of a problem in our winter wheat. Usually, that's more of a spring crop problem. We can occasionally have some problems with wild oats. It does a very good job on wild oats as well, but it has a pretty wide list of the grass weeds. And broadleaf weeds, Flick sweet is pretty common, henbit, blue mustard, uh, tumble mustard, uh, field pennycress, tansy mustard. You know, most of the mustards it's fairly active on. I would not say that this product is completely a one, you know, one shot fits all. It definitely needs some help where, you know, with the broadleaf control. But it, it does give you, you know, another, another real thing in the tank to get a lot of them. This was up in American Falls. If you look on this side, the light color you can see between here is is the top, is a seed head on the downy brome, and down you know, over on the left you can see down in and uh, you'll see right to the dirt in between the rows. This is actually you know kind of between American Falls and Arbon, and this is a dryland area. You know this is dryland wheat that it was put on. I was there on that tour and looked at it, and it was pretty amazing what they were able to do and this was with a spring application um, they they got excellent control far better than what i had ever seen with any other grass herbicide this th this is good you know nice looking field of wheat but this is typically what you will see in irrigated wheat when we have downy brome pressure you can see that downy brome up well above the canopy of the wheat you now this was a sprayer skip here um, i think there was a, a planned one they put out a tarp because um, it was put on by air, and then after they got done spraying, they pulled the tarp off. Um, this is Mac McDonald from Dow AgriScience, and uh, Dave Wynn is the Bayer rep, and uh, this was actually in Dave's own field, so he wasn't afraid of using using the competitor's product when it when it when it was the best thing for him. Here's a picture. This is an untreated downy brome plant, and this is what you'll typically see with a treated plant in the spring. You'll much much more reduced biomass there. You don't have as big as seed pods. There's some question as to whether the seed in that are going to be viable or any more viable or less viable. That's something we just don't know yet. We do know that it produces a whole lot less seed. Um, and this plant is not going to compete with a wheat plant very well, even in a dry land condition. To pick up kochia, prickly lettuce, I think you know, are some of the big ones. You're going to you know, go with Starane or Starane NXT, Wide Match. Um, one of the big watch outs on this is do not tank mix any dicamba products. That's Banvel or anything that has Banvel in it. Or any amine. So don't use 2,4-D amine products. Not usually a problem first thing in the spring. We don't use a lot of amines. Um, it, does, it is labeled to get lamb's quarter when it's less than two inches tall. I'm not as comfortable with that. I think you need, you know, 
a little bit of 2,4-D or MCPA ester to help with that. And the same with the Russian thistle. I think you need uh, you know, have a little bit, you know, a little bit of help with it. Um, on the dry land, I'm per perfectly fine going with 2,4-D with it. Yeah, if you've got other weeds there, um, you know, that are going to cause problems for you, so you have some snow speedwell or uh, burr buttercup, you probably better add some ally extra or affinity broad spec to it. Now, Gold Sky is Powerful X plus of, you know, a couple other things. It has an extra safener, has more safener so that it safens it up for spring wheat. It also has Starane, uh, has Starane and it has another SU in there that is similar to Affinity Broad Spec or Express, Harmony Extra, if you've used those. Um, it has an extremely broad label and is designed to be a, a one jug, you know, fits all. Does a great job on wild oats, yellow foxtail, um, the brome species. Does a great job on kochia and mustards, uh, Russian thistle. It's still, we have missed lamb's quarter with gold sky alone. We usually put a third to a half a pint of LV6 with it, and then we don't have any problems. I was a little nervous about gold sky last summer. We applied it on a fairly large you know, field, and it was a field that I had to drive by on my way to work every day. And three weeks later, after we had applied it, you know, things just did not look like they were dying. I couldn't believe it. You know, we had, we had broadleaf weeds that were six inches tall, that were just as green as could be. We had wild oats that were just green and happy. And I called the rep. He came down, looked at it, and he says, you really screwed up. You were too late. Too big of weeds. It's not going to kill it and I'm not going to cover it. Well, we had sprayed it the day that our, the grower had called and asked us, so we, you know, I told him, I says, you know, let's watch it and see. That was at three weeks after we sprayed it. Four weeks after we sprayed it, things started to turn, and by five weeks, the, it had really turned around. I was pretty impressed that, it, you know, it just took a long time um, to, to be able to, you know, to kill that. Um, and I think that, you know, it would not have been nearly as long had we been on smaller, you know, a lot smaller weeds if we'd got on it a lot earlier. Has a very short rotation interval, nine months for most crops. The inter rotation interval is about the same as what PowerFlex is. Um, very, you know, excellent crop tolerance and a pretty wide application window. It is what is called an oil dispersion formulation. This was something new for me. I had never seen one of these before. And, you know, to understand it, it's a, it's a suspension concentrate, meaning there is so much stuff in there that it forms a suspension, not a solution. There's just all this stuff that's kind of suspended in a liquid. And they tend to settle out. Power, you know, the gold sky will settle out. When you get a case of it, you pull the jug out, the bottom two-thirds of the jug will be kind of a you know, tannish, creamy color, and the top will be dark. You know, a real dark amber color. Doesn't mean that the product is bad, it's just the nature of this oil dispersion formulation. Just shake it up good before you dump any out and you know, it'll go back into suspension. You've got an even mix of it, works, per, you know, works very well. Um, but, you know, and we do recommend some continuous agitation in the tank. If you're gonna load it and go right to spraying, it doesn't take a lot, but if it's gonna take you a little while, make sure you've got some decent agitation. Um, you know, for spring wheat in Durham, um, well, this applies to winter wheat as well. One pint per acre is the rate. Uh, so you're doing 20 acres per jug. It is a post-emergent, so it's only going to kill the weeds that it gets. Um, we want actively growing crop and weed targets. If it's drought stressed, don't expect it to do as well. The crop, you can go three leaf up to joint again. And your grass weeds, two leaf to two tiller but your optimum is about two to four leaves. And the broadleaf weaves, weeds, we'd like to see at two inches or less. Gold Sky last year was priced at about $18 an acre. You can't get another wild oat herbicide and put any tank mix with it for anything less than about $24. This was, that was the reason why Gold Sky um, became so popular last year is because it was a very economical choice for wild oat control in uh, spring wheat. Um, you know, it gave us excellent control. Um, it does require surfactant plus ammonium sulfate. That's pretty darn important. Um, but if you're going to tank, mix it with 2,4-D, leave the non-ionic surfactant out, still put the ammonium sulfate in. That's pretty critical no matter what. 
But uh, the esters tend to heat it up enough that you don't want to add any, anything else to it or you can have some crop injury. Again, the re-entry interval is 24 hours. Your pre-harvest interval is 60 days. Some of the weeds, wild oats, uh, foxtails, downy brome, it does have some suppression on quack grass, as does power flex. You know, I've seen different forms of suppression on the quack grass and, you know, to different degrees. I've never seen what I would call control, but it, it will suppress it. It does excellent on kochia and your mustards. Again, lamb's quarter, I think it still needs a little bit of LV6 or semester with it. But it does a very good job on the catchweed bed straw, for those of you with bed straw. This is, this are some trials um, up in Idaho. On the right, we've got Gold Sky plus MCPA ester and ammonium sulfate. Um, and on the left is Discover, another you know, competitive uh, wild oat herbicide plus Starane and MCPA ester. Um, broadleaf weed control looks about the same, but the thing to, to notice, this is the untreated check in between the two plots. You can see what kind of pressure they had from wild oats, and uh, the Gold Sky did a very excellent job. Uh, crop rotations again, one month to wheat, nine months to barley, um, you know, corn, nine months to alfalfa, mustard, safflower. So about anything we're going to do here, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're fine going the next spring. And you can follow it up, you know, if you're going continuous wheat, you could, you know, plant winter wheat, um, you know, behind wheat and be okay. Now moving on to products that are labeled for wheat and barley. Um, Axial XL is another wild oat herbicide. It's probably our drug of choice for barley uh, when we got wild oats. It is labeled for annual grasses in wheat and barley. And you know, typically that's wild oats, green and yellow, and giant foxtail around here. Uh, does have some activity on barnyard grass as well. The timing on it, it will take wild oats from one leaf up to six leaf stage. That's some pretty big oats. I would rather push, you know, ideally I'd like to be about in the four, you know, three to five leaf stage probably. The problem with a one leaf wild oat, how big is it? They're pretty darn tiny, you know, and they'll have a single little spike coming up that's standing straight up and you've got to get product to stick to it in order to kill it. And it's really hard to do that. Yeah, uh, you know, so wild oats we want, you know, one to six leaf, yellow, green, giant foxtail, one leaf, one to five leaves, but before the third tiller. By that time, they get a little harder to control. The wheat and barley, you're okay from the two leaf stage up to the pre-boot stage of the crop. That's a pretty wide window. That's wider than what most of your broadleaf herbicides or you know, tank mix are gonna be with it. And Axial has, has some issues with tank mix partners, and we'll cover those as well. There's one rate at 16.4 ounces per acre. It comes in a 2.56 gallon jug, and that's you know works out to you know 20 acres per jug, you know just an even 20 acres per jug. It, you, axial used to come, and you had a little jug of of axial, and then you had two jugs of Atagor, which was their adjuvant. Well, they figured out that they how to tank you know, mix those two together in the jug so you don't have two different products. So the, the adjuvant, your surfactant, is already in the product. And you do not add any additional uh, you know, surfactants or adjuvants to it. Minimum of 10 gallons per acre. Your re-entry interval is 48 hours and pre-harvest interval is 60 days. Um, your crop rotation restrictions are pretty short really. Wheat and barley, zero days. Leafy and root crops, 30 days. Other cereal grains and all other crops are 120 days. So, you know, pretty short re you know, re rotational restrictions for what we're looking at here. Do not add 2,4-D or dicamba. So no 2,4-D, no Banvil. You know, 2,4-D is cheap and that's what everybody wants to use. But 2,4-D and dicamba are what's called an antagonist with axial. What it does is it basically neutralizes the efficacy of the axial and you will not kill oats or your foxtail with it. So what can you use? Starane, Wide Match, Affinity Broad Spec or Affinity Tank Mix, Bronate, you can use MCPE Ester, you can use Husky. You know, there are more out there and there's combinations of these that, that we can use, but these are the main ones that, you know, that we've used and had very good success with. Just again, in case you didn't hear me, no 2,4-D or dicamba with, with Axial. Cost per acre, I think was around $15, $16 an acre last year for Axial. And then, you know, you can be $10, $10, $11 on a 
on a you know tank mix partner. So you know you're looking twenty four twenty five dollars an acre. That's where in wheat the gold sky was was such an advantage. Next thing we're talking about is husky. We talked you know quite in depth about husky a few years ago here. We used a lot of husky and um, we learned an awful lot about it. Some guys have a love hate relationship. Some love it. Some hate it. Uh, there, there were some issues with Husky that we found in the first couple of years that we were not prepared for. Um, I don't think, you know, they were more cosmetic than they were, you know, causing injury. Um, Husky has uh, two active ingredients, the pyrosulfatol plus bromoxynil, and this methamperidiethyl is a safener. <coughs> um, the pyrosulfatol is what's called a bleacher. I love Husky. I'm a big fan of it, especially if you got something like Volunteer Alfalfa, because you know very you know exactly where it was at. And I can drive around the valley, and if I you know, and I can tell if a field's been sprayed with Husky or not. If there's Volunteer Alfalfa out there, because that Volunteer Alfalfa within a few days starts to turn yellow, and within about a week, you've got a white, just really white alfalfa plant standing out there. And for a guy that likes to kill weeds, that's a beautiful sight. You know, it, so, you know, crops are wheat, barley, and triticale. The rate range is 11 to 15 ounces. We recommend 12.8 ounces per acre. And we do recommend adding a little bit of LV6 or MCPA ester to it. And we've had more consistent results using that. Your timing, you can go from one leaf up to the flag leaf emergence. That's, that's a you know, really wide window there as well. Rain fast in one hour does require using a surfactant and some ammonium sulfate. You only need about a half a pound to one pound of ammonium sulfate, or you can use a couple of quarts of 32 solution. Pre-harvest intervals, 25 days for forage or 60 days for grain and straw. I think I've got another one on rotational restrictions. We'll talk about that. It has a really wide window of uh, products that you have, know, weeds that it will kill. You'll notice it gets kosher, and this asterisk here does, you know, does mean that you know, it will get the ALS resistant kosher, the stuff that is resistant to Star A or to uh, Express, Harmony Extra, Affinity Broad Spec. That is a big problem in Cache Valley. I didn't think it was as big a problem as it was, and then we called some of our reps in on some complaints and you know, non performance issues, and they felt like we have a bigger problem with resistant kosher here in Cache Valley than they do up in Idaho. You know, so it, you know, it's, a big, it's a big deal. But you know, almost all the common weeds that we deal with are on this Husky label. Your rotational flexibility, you know, seven days to most of your cereals. Um, now this is, sorry, this didn't show up. Four months to millet and alfalfa, sorghum or soybeans. Now, it's four months to alfalfa, but it needs 12 inches of precipitation and cultivation. So, you know, if it's on irrigated ground um, and you've put at least 12 inches, you know, between irrigation and rainfall and you're going to, you know, dig a little bit before you're going to plant hay, then you're fine. Other, you know, or if you're going to go over the winter, you're fine there as well. And nine months to most everything else, even stuff like potatoes and sugar beets, those seem to be hypersensitive to about anything out there. If there's anything that's going to kill over, it's going to be sugar beets and, and it's fine after nine months. Um, this was up in American Falls at one of their demo plots. Um, this is 11 ounces of Husky here. Looks just like the you know, 13 and a half ounces here. And this is the untreated check. You can see they had pretty good kosher pressure there. And this one was 15 ounces. So you can see the 15, 13, and 11, they all look the same. If you get on it early when the weeds are small, you know, the, the lower rates of husky will be fine. And by small, I mean less than one inch. But if you're getting over an inch tall, you probably better go to the higher rates. That's why we've kind of stuck in here at 12.8 ounces and put, uh, put a little 2,4-D or MCPA ester with it. At that rate, it works out to about 25 acres per jug, makes it about 10 to $11 per acre, you know, for your husky there. And that's, you know, compared to the other products that will get good that resistant kosher, that's pretty competitive. Um, Starane Ultra. Starane Ultra is just a newer, more concentrated formulation of Starane. I think most of you have probably seen some Starane, you know, or, or, or we've talked about it before. It's just, a, you know, we use less of it. 
so we're you know able to you know just carry less product with us. You cover more per tank, you know, less packaging to dispose of, you know, some of the advantages of it. It contains 2.8 pounds of fluoroxapyr per gallon versus the old Starane, which is one and a half pounds per, you know, per gallon. Um, the only change is the application rates. As far as the, you know, the reentry intervals, uh, pre-harvest intervals, all of that stuff, that's, uh, it's every, everything's all the same there. Your rate conversion, if, we were, if you were using a half a pint of Starane before, you use three-tenths of a pint of Starane Ultra. And uh, two-thirds you know, you go, you know, of a pint, you go down to a four-tenths of a pint. And that's, that's really the only change. And that's the, the only way that Starane is coming now, is Starane Ultra. There's probably a little Starane, you know, regular Starane still left in the system out there, uh, but it will all be converting over to Starane Ultra. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit scary when you start looking at the price of Starring Ultra because it's, I think it's around $300 a gallon and you, know, you put two and a half gallons in a jug and if you're only putting, you know, three tenths of a pint um, out there, you cover about 60 acres, you know, per jug and that's, that's a pretty big, pretty big bill unless you've got, you know, that many acres to spray um, and oftentimes you don't. But it is, it is labeled, you know, we're moving on to wide match, let me back up here, the Starring specialty is kochia. It has a very narrow weed list. It you know, does a very good job on kochia and usually prickly lettuce, but it doesn't kill a whole lot of other weeds. But it just happens to kill kochia, one of our major problems. And it, it does have to have a lot of help to, keep, you know, to, to clean everything up. My, my recommended mix with Starane is Affinity Broad Spec. I like Starane Ultra at between 3 tenths and 4 tenths of a pint and uh, you know, four tenths to a half an ounce of Affinity Broad Spec. Uh, we can go a little earlier if we need to. We leave out the Phenoxy, the 2,4-D, you know, no 2,4-D, no MCPA ester, and we really have not had any skips, any weed skips with this tank mix. It's worked extremely well for us. Um, the last two years, we've probably done close to 10,000 acres with that mix, and uh, never had to go back and respray when, you know, when we've done that. So you know, we're pretty happy with that. Wide Match. Wide Match has been out for a few years, but it, it, it's not one out here in the West, and, and our reps haven't really pushed it because in Idaho, Wide Match is still a, is, is really a, only a four-letter word. Wide Match is a broadleaf herbicide for use in wheat, barley, oats, CRP, field corn, grasses grown for seed. And it is a tank mix of clopyrrolid, the active ingredient Stinger, and one of the active is in Curtail and it has fluoroxapyr, which is starring. Now, if any of you have ever used Curtail, you know that it is, it's our drug of choice for thistles, you know, especially Canada thistle and South thistle, um, and, you know, any of the musk, bull thistle, you know, does a great job for us. Eventually, Curtail, they're telling us, will go away, and Wide Match will be the replacement for it. Curtail is clopyrrolid plus 2,4-D or MCPA ester. But this, this has a very wide weed spectrum and we've had very good results using Wide Match. Wide Match has some rotational restrictions and that's why it's kind of a four letter word in Idaho. It's really, really hard on potatoes. Really hard. Especially seed potatoes. Your rate is 1 to 1.33 pints per acre. Curtail we used to have to put a quart on and we're actually getting more of the clopyrrolid with a pint than we were with a quart of curtail. So for thistle control, wide match is probably a better choice. Um, on your wheat, barley, and oats, from three leaf stage up to the flag leaf emergence, but before weeds exceed four inches in height. Now that flag leaf emergence, this is another one that gives you an extremely broad window. Um, and make sure you don't apply it to cereals underseeded with a legume. If you're gonna plant some alfalfa and plant a cover crop of oats, don't do this because it will get rid of that pesky alfalfa problem. You know, so, you know, and your re-entry interval on that is 12 hours. You can be back in there. Now the crop rotation interval, you want to make sure what you're doing and look at all the, the sub notes and everything. Because sometimes, you know, if you, if you look at wide match on the label, there is a place where it says crop rotation intervals and it will say 12 months to alfalfa, 12 months to potatoes. And you read down the label a little further and there's we have, you know, I was at Idaho and Utah and two or three other states have our own special rotational restrictions. You know, cereals we can go anytime, canola and flax 120 days, 
Alfalfa is 12 months, but there is an asterisk by it that says do a bioassay. That means go get some dirt from it, bring it in the house, warm it up, and plant some alfalfa in there and see if it'll grow. You know, that's what doing a bioassay is. I'm a lot more comfortable with 18 months. You know, that stinger's pretty hard on it. Potatoes, mustard, safflower, it's 18 months. So in the dry land, if you're going to use wide match and you're going to follow a safflower, probably need to watch that and, and either find a different product or um, change your crop rotation or something. I told you it's really hard on potatoes. I didn't, I didn't understand how hard. I thought that if you put a wide match on and you know, one year and the next year you planted potatoes, it would kill the potatoes. Well, the potatoes seem to grow just fine, but what's really critical is with seed potatoes, you grow a crop of seed potatoes where they put the, you know, the clopyrrolid on the year before, and the potatoes grow just fine, but when they go to replant the, the seed, um, it comes up with deformed potatoes. You're almost two years later that this stuff comes back to bite you. The other thing that wide match and you know, clopyrrolid you know, will do is it sticks around in organic matter. So if you use this on wheat, you bale up the straw or barley, bale up your straw, use it for bedding, haul that out on the field, it's still going to stick around a little bit. If you take that straw off and you know, maybe it got rained on a bunch and it's really not good for bedding and you can find somebody that can use it for compost. They put it in their compost and it, uh, it, st it can survive, you know, it sticks around clear through the composting process. Betty Crocker comes and, you know, sends you to town to get a uh, you know, load of compost for her to put in her flower bed, and you go home and put that on your wife's flower bed, you're not going to be the most popular man of the house because it will take care of those pesky flowers. You know, so wide match sticks around a little while. And, and so that's why it's very rarely used up in Idaho. We don't have near the potato concern down here. Um, this is an excellent product for, you know, rangeland and pasture situations as well. Um, some of the weed strengths, it is most, you know, it's only broadleaf weeds that it gets. The thistle family, your Canada thistle, your musk thistle, perennial sow thistle, does an excellent, excellent job in controlling those. That's the big thing, you know, that we get with wide mat. Um, to talk real briefly on rangeland and pasture, and I don't have as much information as I had hoped. I thought I had a couple of presentations on chaparral I could pull things from. We did some test plots out with chaparral out in Clifton last fall or last summer, uh, early in the summer, and we were extremely impressed with how it works. You know, chaparral is an amino pyrrolid, which I believe is the same thing as milestone, and metsulfuron. You know metsulfuron as either ally or escort, um, but they're they're strictly pasture and rangeland. Now, you know, milestone's active. In, I miss one there. The active ingredient is amino pyrrolid. It's a different group than what most of it. It's very closely related to tordon. It is absorbed by both leaves and roots. Uh, you have to be a little careful about you know, around trees and stuff with, with milestone. It is systemic, and you know, because it's phloem and xylem mobile, it can move through both the water transfer system and the nutrient transfer system in the plant. It can move up and down. So it can be taken in through the leaves and sent down to the roots, and then when it gets watered into the, into the soil, the roots can take it up and send it back up to the leaves and get a double shot. Um, but it is a selective control of broadleaf weeds. It doesn't get everything, but it does have residual control of, of a lot of germinating weeds. These are the primary weeds. A lot of the thistles and nap weeds are the primary things that we're going after with, with the milestone. It would, I, I don't know if it does teasel or not. I haven't used it enough to know. And maybe that's a question for Joel. He's probably used a lot more milestone than I have. But you can see the difference here. You know, this was a quart of 2,4-D, and you can still see a lot of these thistles and broadleaf weeds in there. And animals will naturally not graze around them. I, mean, I wouldn't eat if somebody, you know, I wouldn't eat off of a plate that was poking me all the time either. Um, you know, and you can see that, you know, this is, you know, same area, but, uh, you know, milestone at four ounces did a very good job of cleaning things up. This is kind of an interesting picture here. Um, this was milestone at seven ounces. Um, this is probably napweed at 30 days after treatment. There's a, you can almost see the lines in here, and maybe it's because they've drawn in the yellow lines. We can kind of see something different here. This looks a little more green and robust outside of the treatment area. But they came back and took pictures two years later. That's the same house, same fence, everything. 
This is two years later, that same area. And, uh, you know, two years later, it, it was doing a pretty good job on the knapweeds. Um, don't mix up milestone and, you know, spray it on any field crops because um, you won't like that either. It has a very long residual, um, you know, you're, you're going to be one to two years out plus a bioassay to get anything else to, to grow there. Chaparral, you know, just to, you know, so you know, if, if anybody wants to look at our test plot coming this summer, you know, we're going to be evaluating that again out there in Clifton and see how good it looks on year two. We'd be happy to take any of you out there. Um, remember, always read and follow the labels. You know, remember, you know, be aware of what you're spraying, when you're spraying it, and what else is around you all the time. Uh, we're going to mention, you know, on the cobalt. Cobalt, like most insecticides, is pretty hard on bees. So just kind of be aware of that and, uh, you know, pay attention to what you're doing. Always read and follow the label. I've given you a lot of information. It's by no means complete. If you want more information about your specific situation, feel free to call me. Um, there's my cell number, or you can email me. There's my email address. I do text message as well. Some of you have gotten texts from me before, but, you know, call me, email, you know, whatever. We're, you know, we're more than happy to help you, you know, if we need to come and scout fields or look at weeds. We have guys bring weeds in all the time. That's part of what our job is, is to, you know, help you guys be, be more profitable and uh, you'll be better farmers. So.